welcome to another DIY video. Once you have learned it, it can benefit the rest of your life. Many of you would have a rain barrel to collect water from the sky, but how many of you actually use it like a boss? Most people would use a watering can just like this. It's a waste of time and it's not effective. I am going to show you my setup and workflow. Grab this hose, then plug and play. Open the valve. Oh yes, I am using a power supply from an old desktop computer. Switch it on, bingo! Look, that's what I'm talking about. Believe it or not, I can even wash my car with a pressure washer. Water is free and the car is clean. The setup is so cool, it can catch a lot of your neighbor's attention. Just a warning, the hot single mom living across the street may ask you to install one for her. Before starting the conversation with the single mom, you need to buy a 12 volt water pump. I got this from Amazon. I am not affiliated with this particular brand. You can look for other brands for sure. Make sure you look for at least 50 psi and 3 gallons per minute. It has automatic stop and self prime. This top 3 points are very very important. This flow max has decent field quality and it comes with the inline strainer. So you don't have to spend another 10 bucks on that. It claims it can even run dry without any damage. That's amazing. Usually this type of pumps are designed for RV or use on a boat running on 12 volt. You pay for what you get. Anything less than $80 Canadian would not be good enough. Now let's take a look at the user menu. At 12 volt DC, you want to install a 10 amp fuse to protect the circuit. Here is a useful DIY tips. For automotive fuse, you don't actually need to buy any fuse holder. I am reusing an old cable from the UPS. I always take the old electronic appliances apart and find some useful parts for the future. This is the 10 amp fuse. It fits right into the connector. To make it function like a fuse holder, I am applying some hot glue so it will stay in place. Next, wrap it with some tape and we are almost there. This DIY fuse holder can save you 2 bucks. Of course, you can remove the fuse just like the one you buy from the store. Isn't this cool? To save you from buying a 12 volt power supply, I am reusing an ATX power supply from an old desktop computer. Let's spend some time and take a look at the spec. At 12 volt DC, it gives you 15 amp. That's more than enough for the pump. Indeed, the desktop power supply is pretty powerful. It can be used for car audio too. This is my setup in the basement. I am using two desktop power supplies to power two amps. One for the speakers and one for the mono amp for the JL Audio W6 V2 subwoofer. This used to be in my car before I got married 20 years ago. Ah, not sure if the hot single mom across the street would like to party. Alright, let's get back to business. To turn on the desktop power supply, you cannot just switch it on like that. It won't start. You have to connect these two wires on the 20 pin connector. The third and the fourth one from the right with the plastic latch facing towards you. It's the same if you have the 24 pin and you can confirm this by looking at the diagram. All we have to do is to cut off these two wires, very simple, then connect them together. To make sure that the installation looks like a pro, you want to do some soldering and then use the heat shrink wrap to protect the wires. Let's switch on the power supply. You can tell the fan is running. That means it's working. Run the voltmeter on the LP4 connector which was originally used to connect to your hard drive, DVD-ROM for your desktop computer. Any black color wire is ground and red color is 5 volt. Let's switch to yellow color wire. There you go, we got 12 volt. What we need is black and yellow. The other two wires, red and another black color wire, we don't need it. Next, connect the inline fuse to the yellow color wire and extend that with the white color wire in my case. 
Let's move on and talk about garden hose for your pump. If you have bought a new washing machine before and you did not replace the old water hose, you are in luck. You should have an extra pair came with the new machine. I hope you did not throw that away because garden hose and washing machine hose are compatible. Not many people know about that. That's my DIY tips of the day. Of course, you can follow what I did. I took this from my mother-in-law's house. Now, chop this into two pieces. You may have a hard time pushing it into the PAX connector. Okay, let me give you another DIY tips. All you have to do is to heat the rubber hose with the heat gun. Then, you can push it in. Clamp it down using an adjustable clamp, and we are good to go. I am installing a garden hose hanger near the garage door. The plan is to install the pump down there. And the power supply over here. Sounds like a plan. Technically, you can mount the pump in any position. However, if you read the manual carefully, they said when mounting it vertically, the pump head should be in downed position to avoid leakage into the motor casing during a malfunction. Always RTFM and pay attention to the little details. That's very important for a good quality DIY job. To install the power supply, I am using galvanized steel hanger strap to secure it to the drywall. If you have seen my videos before, I love to use my favorite zip ties to tidy up any cables. Because we are using this in the garage, spiders and other insects can be a problem. To protect the power supply, I am installing some window screen. It's very easy, just like wrapping the gifts during Christmas. Tape it at the back using your favorite duct tape. Finally, put it back in place and we can carry on to the next step. To make this more elegant, I am installing two pipe brackets. To drill it into the concrete foundation, here is another DIY tips. If you are planning to buy a hammer drill, let's forget about it. It's waste of money. I strongly recommend to buy the Bosch SDS Plus. For serious DIY people, SDS Plus is more than just a hammer drill because it can help you to get rid of the tiles during your floor renovation. That's how I fixed my driveway too. If you have not seen that video before, you should check it out. I will post the link in the description. SDS Plus is fast and powerful. Trust me, you will thank me for that. If you have extra money, you can get SDS Max, but it's overkill for regular DIY projects around your house. Alright, the setup is completed. That looks pretty neat. The output of the pump is connected to the flexible garden hose in black. The water intake is connected to the hose in green color. Each time I need to water my plants, all I need to do is to grab this hose and connect to this quick connector. This runs along the wall on the side of the garage and connected to the rain barrel. It is controlled by this valve. Snap it on, open the valve and we can see it in action. There's one thing you need to pay attention. You have to open your garden hose nozzle, otherwise the pump will not be able to prime because there is air inside. Turn on the power supply, this is the moment you have been waiting for. After you shut off the garden hose nozzle, it automatically stops when it reaches 50 psi. The water pressure is very good, there is no difference compared to the faucet inside of the house. To test if the actual product meets the specification provided by the manufacturer, let's do a test using the pressure gauge. It stops before 60 psi, I would say it is around 55 psi, that's amazing. Let's hook it up to the pressure washer and see what happens. Believe it or not, you can clean your car too. But wait a sec, you may be wondering how can dirty water from the rain barrel can clean your car? 
I am showing you some tips and tricks. I am not even using soap because it's illegal to use it on my driveway in my city. This is the downspout diverter. Here is my secret. I am using this foam designed for rain gutter. You can get it from your local hardware store for 10 bucks. This filters out 90% of the dirt. To further improve the water quality, from time to time I add some bleach just like that. The next day, whoa, look at this, it's cleaned. Nope, it won't kill any plants. For just a quick clean, focus on the bottom half of the car and let the pressure washer do the job. But the pressure washer won't be able to get rid of all the dirt. Now, the next step is very important. Before it dries, use paper towel to wipe it down if your car is on a lease. Paper towel is very powerful to get rid of the remaining dirt. However, it can scratch the clear coat. But why would you care if you are on a lease, honestly? Again, just focus on the bottom part. You don't have to do the top half. It's totally okay if your car has metallic paint in light color. But if you have solid paint in dark color such as black, I don't recommend using paper towel. Tire foam is another important element in this routine. You will see what I mean in a sec. I know some of you may be rolling your eyes and say, That's not the right way to clean the car. Okay, we are not talking about car detailing here. I bet you won't put any wax on the John Deere lawnmower, right? The result is decent enough. Can you believe I am using the water from the rain barrel? Give this a thumbs up if you think this video has some good information. My goal is to inspire more people into DIY. I hope that helps. You may also want to check out other videos on my channel. I am pretty sure you will love them. Remember to subscribe. Thanks for watching and see you next time.